Hey you, how you doing? Uh, so it's been my birthday and um, well firstly the numbers are making absolutely no sense at all so we'll just ignore that, it, it, it doesn't compute. But I just wanted to share something with you that I've been waiting an entire year for because I had this as a gift for my last birthday and it's taken all year to come here which means it's rather anticipated and more than a little bit special and that's because it's something that hasn't been released into the wild before now. Uh, it's something that the lovely First Lady of Momo found for me on a Kickstarter. And it's finally arrived in time for my special day 12 months later uh, because it's a Kickstarter that was rather overwhelmed with interest. And you might understand why when I open it. So let's open it. Uh, it's this. What is this? Uh, it's it's a good looking thing. Look, look at that for a gift. That's great, isn't it? That's great there. So let's open this up. Um, this, now of course, it's not a surprise to me because I know what it is, but it's a cardboard box. That's what it is. Let's see what's in it. What is that? That is a Voyager gold disc set. Do you know what they are? Of course you do. Um, the Voyager gold discs were created by a team led by legendary cosmologist Carl Sagan in uh, the mid-70s. And they were designed to be a sort of augmented identity plaque for the side of the Voyager probes, both of them launched, one and two, in 1977, exactly 40 years ago this year. Uh, and to commemorate it, some bright spark had the idea of trying to resurrect these these plaques because they were of course a lot more than just name badges on the side of these little probes. They were made of gold and they were playable records and they were of course very famously a beam to the cosmos about us, humanity. A sort of curation of all that we are and uh, <laughs> and we trusted that any spacefaring race uh, clever enough to get into the depths of the cosmos would undoubtedly have great taste and, and listen to everything on vinyl. Plus a little pin badge. That's rather good, isn't it? So let's open it. See what we've got here. Wow. What's that? It's like a little exclusive card of some sort. And then, oh, look, they've got a slip mat. Voyager 1, Voyager 2, their routes around the cosmos and sort of where they're going off to now. The thing is, they're not actually being pointed at specific stars, uh, but they like to come within sensible light years of some. And then here, what's that? Is that just a goddamn sticker? That's a beautiful bit of pointless embossing. But you'll see here, these are, and I don't expect me talking through this from a science point of view, but these are, uh, where's Andy Robinson when you need him? Where are you, Robinson? You know all about this. I need to get you on this. Uh, these are the instructions for how to play this, if you've never seen a record player before. And they are, of course, on the side of the discs themselves. And then here, well, there's a Voyager. Isn't that beautiful? Uh... Oh, and there's a gorgeous sort of shot of it. And hang on. That's what's in there. This is just more pointless packaging that I can't get into. This is riveting video. Look, there's nothing in there. Okay. Uh, and here you can see what it is. Side A. Greeting from Kirk Waldheim, Secretary General of the United States. There is a beautiful quote from... 
Oh, look, and there we are. I'll come back to the quote. The Voyager Gold Record. My word. And. I can do this with my hand. There it is. Sort of. <laughs> it's sort of translucent. I feel so hard. It's not gold. Wow. The Voyager Golden Record. That's the first one. And then in here we have... This is such beautiful packaging, isn't it? <laughs> Can you tell what that is, kids? It's the backyard. It's the solar system. And then... Another bit of a Voyager. Or, you know... Voyager! And there is one of the discs right on the side, shown in the image. Just cemented on there, no mucking about. And there is another one of the discs. And then here is... Hello... From the children of planet Earth. Another bit of a probe. And you'll see the sorts of things that they had here. They were trying to cu curate a snapshot of all of Earth. And so they went for highbrow stuff like Symphony No. 5, C minor, Opus 50, 57. It's Ludwig's van Beethoven, of course. Pum, 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 pum. Of course you're going to send that in this space. Um, and then they've got uh, like a Navajo night chant and um, the cry of the mega megapode bird. The megapode bird. Have you ever heard of that? We live here. Have you ever heard of that? Well, you're an ornithologist. You would have heard of it. I'm asking the wrong person. It's meant to be a whole cross-section of who we are. And who we are as implicitly part of one planet human system. And then in here, I use the actual thing to pull this out. A beautiful big picture book. <laughs> Max L tapes. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Lovely, 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 lovely. Now I'm showing you this just because it you know, this is a beautiful moment in human history where art and science symbolically came together. <laughs> Andy Robinson, look at that. Space. See, I think the interesting thing about having this turn up is the time from which it came. The 1970s. Obviously, this was a time of an explosion of science fiction, uh, most notably with a science fantasy epic that changed everything, Star Wars, coming out in 1977. But this was a sort of high watermark, wasn't it? of people thinking outwardly. We'd been to the moon, and yes, the Apollo missions had been cancelled by this stage, but there was still an optimism. Because uh, I suppose the space shuttle hadn't flown yet. <laughs> there was still hope that we might do something more exciting than that. Brilliant as the shuttle was, of course, in some ways. This was a firmly looking outward thing, but it was also a firmly reflecting back at us thing, wasn't it? The chances of this being found by intelligent life are very remote, and the chance of them finding it in time to come back and go, hey, I love your music, uh, is almost, you know, nil. And yet, pulling it together said something to us. And, and that quote I was going to mention was from Jimmy Carter, who was president at the time. And he said, um, this is a snapshot of our feelings, our hopes, our sounds, us. We are attempting to survive our time to live on into yours. What a profound thing. And... What does that say to you? What it says to me is that could be said now. And I think that in a way the 70s started things that we're only really addressing now. We kind of put pause on the great start to green issues and humanitarian issues that we started back in the 70s. They were paused for an entire generation. My, my life here. When I was a kid we talked about green things and they went away because of Thatcherism and particular easy money view of finance which, you know, a post-war Britain did in a sense need 
question is, at what cost? And it's the kind of question that I'm asking a lot more with the work that I'm about to share and do, uh, you know, sh share with you and, and, and work into and all the people I'm talking to about it. Uh, and my good friend Andy Robertson is definitely one of those. Uh, so I urge you to watch his, uh, his film, uh, Leaving the Cradle, which I'm linking to elsewhere. Because he too, by total coincidence, had one of these on his birthday, coming from his wife, Lucy, who thought of the same thing my lovely wife did. And so we're sort of geeking off over these together, except he knows much more. He, he wrote to NASA when he was a kid in the 70s, and he's got loads of info, and he can talk a great length about these very interestingly. And no, I'm not going to play it for you now. <laughs> it's going to be a very private moment indoors on my record player. But I wanted you to see this as evidence of uh, what's inspiring me at the moment and of how I, I believe we've got to get back to this kind of largesse. And a synthesis of art and science, I believe, has never been needed more than now. And this is a kind of calling card to remind us that that's the sort of vision we need. It's our ways of seeing that need to change if we are going to truly address the changes that are happening to us all around us. I'm going to go and indulge in this. What an inspiring birthday gift. Thank you, Mrs. Peach. This is beyond awesome, and I'm going to sort of quietly, reverently <laughs> sit with it for a while. The Voyager Gold Discs and the Goddamn Future.